I'm glad to be in the service one more time. And so it's a real blessing. to be in the service of the Lord. So this time we're going before the Lord in prayer. I'm going to ask Dr. Helen Barnes to be prepared to lead us to the throne of grace. I want you to remember that when you go before the Lord in prayer, we go before the Lord in prayer without doubting, Amen. having faith that he will hear and answer our prayers. Yes. And always remember this, that God is a prayer answering God. He comes, not necessarily when you want him, but he's never late. He's always on time. We can't read all the names of these people who are on this list, and many of, many of, many of them are in hospitals or shut in. But if you can just breathe a word of prayer as you put your petition before the Lord to remember these people whose names are written here. We have hundreds of names every week. And these people believe in the word of prayer or they wouldn't put their names on these lists. And so when the congregation comes together in prayer, God is moved on the throne. And so we're going to ask Sister Dr. Barge to come at this time, lay our hands on these names as we call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let every heart pray. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our voices to you this morning, oh God. We want to thank you once more and again for being here, oh God. We count it an honor and we count it a privilege, Lord, to be in your household. We lay our hands on the prayer list this morning, Lord. Those who are sick, hallelujah, we know that you're able to heal them. We want to come before you this morning, Lord, like the woman was in the crowd. She said, if I could just touch the hem of your garment, she said, I know I'd be made whole. Oh God, we're going to press through the crowd this morning and touch your hem. We're going to touch your hem, oh God. We want your virtue to come forth. We're going to lift up our voices and pray to you, oh God, this morning. We praise you. Lord, we know that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can even ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. We thank you, oh God, for waking us up this morning. Oh God, there were some eyes that closed last night, Lord, didn't wake up this morning. We praise you for the Apostolic Church of God. We praise you, oh God, for the miracle on 63rd Street, Lord. We thank you for a pastor like Dr. Brazier, a man with a vision, oh God, a man that you sent forth to lead your people. We praise you this morning, oh God. We lift up our voices and say hallelujah to you, oh God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for giving us permission, oh God, to ascend before your throne of grace. We praise you, Lord, for your mercy and for your kindness. We're going to be careful to give you the praise, oh God, and give you the honor that every heart say, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say, amen. The scripture this morning, Psalms 113. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From the rising of the sun, the of the sun unto the going down of the same, the, same. the Lord's name, the Lord's name is, to is to be praised. Now lift your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God bless you.
gets his my own and all God my God is oh yes he is my today and forever oh, oh, oh. God, God, God is, is my home and all.
And I found his promises are true. He's everything he said he would be. The finest words I know could not begin to tell how much Jesus really means to me. Then 
Let the church say amen. Oh, we are thankful to the Lord for the songs that our choir has given to us. Sister McDaniel, our director, to all of our musicians, to this great choir, we want to thank the Lord for those inspiring words. You know, that song, God is really a mighty God. He's a great God. And I just want to just take a few moments to say a word to the people who are worshiping with us in the dining room. The television is being transmitted over into the fellowship hall. I would have liked to have had an opportunity to come over and talk to you, but I got the message a little bit too late. And so I, I know that you've come here and you find yourself over in the fellowship hall, but uh, we are so happy that you didn't go turn around and go home. We're just glad to have you here. May the Lord bless you and encourage you. And certainly I'll speak to those who are worshiping with us on television at home. We're very glad to have you here with us also. And now to this great congregation, we are glad that the Lord has brought us together again. And I want to go directly to the preaching of the Word of God and call your attention to the book of Proverbs. I'm going to read from the Old Testament and I'm going to read a verse from the New Testament. Proverbs, the 18th chapter and the 10th verse and Paul's epistle to the Romans, chapter 10, verse 13. I want to, before I read this, I want to let all of you know that this message is to two classes of people. To those of you, the vast majority of you who are here today in this second service, who are already saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, and then to many of you who are here and have not yet received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. There are two things that there's one thing really that always bothers these two classes of people, no matter who it is, and that is some of us are troubled with fear. We are afraid of the future. And very often we are afraid that God cannot do what he said that he would do. That keeps some of us who are Christians always looking over our shoulder. And for those who are unsaved and want to be saved, and there are, there are people like that who in, in, in every service of ours, this morning in the first service, nine were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, God has blessed us in that regard, and I'm sure that uh, someone else here this morning in this particular service may be reaching out because people are looking for something that transcends their material needs. They're looking for something that goes beyond beautiful cars and clothes, furs, and shoes, and expensive suits. They're looking for something that meets their spiritual need. There's a yearning down in the hearts of a lot of people for the Lord. They don't oftentimes know what exactly what it is, but the Lord knows who you are, and he leads us, he guides us, and he brings us to the place where he wants us to be. And I am sure that there are a large number of people, not only just here, but all over this city and this country and the world, really. But specifically, I want to talk to those of you who are here who would receive Jesus Christ in their life if they were not afraid that somehow they couldn't make it, that somehow they would lose out, they would go back into the world, they would dishonor themselves and, and dishonor God. You know, there's one thing that people don't like to do and that they don't like to play with God. They don't like to play with the church. They don't like to be hypocrites. They, they, they want to be real. And they are afraid that because of their past life and because of certain kinds of things that are hanging on them, they're afraid that they might not be real, that they might be hypocrites in there. And so they, they hang back. But my, my, my sermon this morning, I hope, will convince you of the God that we serve and convince you that you need not fear. 
And I pray that the Holy Spirit will be on my words because the Lord said, my word will not go out to me from me void, but will accomplish that whereunto I have sent it. My subject today is the Lord is my hope. The Lord is my hope. And in the 18th chapter of Proverbs, verse 10, we read these words. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. And in Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, I think that it is no new revelation to you for me to say that the Bible is filled with imagery. The Bible is filled with symbolisms. The Bible is filled with word portraits that pictorialize thoughts and ideas. And the psalmist often uses this form of expression. In one place, the psalmist said, the Lord is our dwelling place in all generations. In another place, he said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. In him will I trust. When I read words like the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The Lord is my refuge and my fortress. I get a mental picture of a large tract of land that is dominated by a fortress or a castle. In ancient times, in Europe, dukes and princes owned large tracts of land, many, many, many thousands of square miles, and, and on this land lived what were called serfs, people who worked the land. And they were under the protection of this prince or this duke. And when the area in which they were involved with, was threatened by marauding bands of robbers and criminals, or when word got around the land that they were being invaded by hostile forces, the people who could would rush to these fortresses and these castles that were protected by high walls and towers, surrounded by wide moats filled with water, and the entrances were protected by these huge drawbridges. These drawbridges were let down, and the people of the land would run into these castles and fortresses to be protected from the invading forces or the criminal hordes that were surely to do them a great deal of harm. And so the writer here says in Proverbs, talking about God, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. The apostle Paul, he said pretty much the same thing, but he said it in, in different words, he put it in, a, in different language. He didn't try to pictorialize it or give us any image of it other than to say that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, we the children of God, I think we need to remember this. As you go through life, 
as you meet up with all of the different problems, sometimes with people who you consider to be your enemies, remember that the people of God are not only safe, as the writer of Proverbs said, but they are also saved. There's a difference between S-A-F-E and S-A-V-E-D. Saved. And they are saved eternally by what the Lord Jesus did for us at Calvary. Now, I know that there are some who wonder how that we can be so sure and so certain that we are saved eternally. Now, most folks don't worry about you being say, saying you're saved. That's not a real problem. But they tend to believe that you can be saved and today and lost tomorrow. And that's why so many people are filled with fear because they're really not sure. See, I don't call being on a ship that is shipwrecked in a storm and I grab a hole to a, a piece of wreckage and climb on it, I don't call myself saved on that wreckage out there in the ocean with sharks swimming all around me. I am just temporarily protected. I don't consider myself being saved until my feet rest firmly on terra firma. So people who claim they are saved but could be lost tomorrow or next week, you are like the fella who's hanging on to a piece of wreckage. And you don't know whether you're going to make it to the land or not because you're busy fighting off sharks and thirst. But the child of God who has been filled with the Holy Spirit helps our weaknesses. This is one of the ways I know that we're going to endure. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. We are, we are praying for a lot of things we don't even have no business praying for. My grandchildren or my children, when they, on Christmas, when they came, they asked me, they, they wanted toys. What do you want from Santa Claus? Well, I want a doll, I want a bicycle, I want this, I want that. But I never had any of my children when they were eight or nine years old said, Dad, what I want for Christmas present is I want you to put up some money for me to go to college. <laughs> no child ever came to me and said, Dad, for Christmas, make sure that you have paid the health insurance. <laughs> they don't think of those things. And we are asking God for a lot of things that we want and we need, surely. But the things that we think we need and the things that we want are not our real needs. And we really can't ask for our real needs because we can't see beyond tomorrow. <laughs> Brothers, we can't even, we can't even receive beyond, see beyond now. We don't really know what's going to happen an hour from now. I remember several years ago, it must have been 10 or some years ago, I had a wonderful service. We had a great time. Soul was saved. We were baptized in Jesus' name. We let service out. By 8 o'clock that night, I was flat on my bed in the hospital in, critical, in a critical condition. In fact, the doctor told me later on that you had just passed through a death-threatening experience, a life-threatening experience. Things happen so fast. Cut the ground right off of my But I was praying, but I wasn't praying about that. But the Bible says that the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings that are unspoken. 
And then here is a, a, a verse that is incredible in its implication. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good. That's two parts here. I only read the first one. All things work together for good. No matter what it is, sickness, adversity, prosperity, failure, good marriage, bad marriage, whatever. That's for those things that are bad. We don't mind things that are good because we know they work together for our good, but bad things, we wonder how could that be good? But God overrules all bad things and makes them work out. Wow, good. God overrules it. Joseph's brothers sold him into Egypt as a slave. They wanted to get rid of him. They finally, in the final analysis, they had to go back to Joseph, who had then risen to the uh, office of high, almost uh, the uh, prime minister of Egypt. And when they begged his forgiveness for, what, for the evil that they had done, Joseph said, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. Sometimes people do you evil things. They say evil against you. They talk about you. They criticize you. They run you down. They abuse you verbally. And they mean to hurt you. But God overrules it. And he makes it to work out for your good. And they some back, sit back and wonder, I wonder how could he or she uh, get where they are? I'll tell you why, because God overruled what you was trying to do. Somebody said, oh, I'm glad to hear that, Rev. I'm glad to hear that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't get too sad. Because this is restricted to a certain group. says that God works all things together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. So when we read these words, we come to the realization that no matter how many trials and temptations we must endure, no matter how dark and long the night, no matter how deep and wide the chasm, we will endure, we can overcome. Why? Because of yourself? No, because of God. Why? Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are safe. The name of the Lord. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, do you realize that the name of the Lord a strong tower. Do you believe, understand that in him is everything that you need? When Moses came and stood uh, before the burning bush and asked God who he was, God didn't say, I am this, I am that. He said, I am that I am. I'm going to Egypt. I'm going to go to Pharaoh, and I'm going to speak to Pharaoh, the great king, the man with armies, the man who could cut my head off at the top of a finger, the man who could throw me in jail, the man who could put me in prison. You say to me to go there and tell him to let my people go, and I go to my people and tell them that I'm going to have them a release from slavery. Who shall I tell them sent me? <laughs> Moses wasn't dumb. He might have been old, but he wasn't dumb. <laughs> Who shall I tell them sent me? God said, tell them that I am oh, yeah. sent you. Tell them he who is yeah. sent you. He who is. I am means that whatever you need, I am that. It's all in my name. All of it is in my name. If you are deserted by your friends, if you find yourself alone without anybody, 
Since the name of the Lord is all you need, and Jews gave to the Lord uh, the names of Jehovah, and everything you needed was encompassed in that name, and you are alone, and you are lonely, and you need someone to be there with you, then call on Jehovah Yireh. Which says that the Lord is there. If there's trouble in your home, and you are having difficulty with your family and your in-laws, and there's all kinds of, of uh, over uh, trouble, and, and uh, you can't find any rest, and, and you're troubled about job security, and you're sweating, and you don't know what's going on, then call upon Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is our peace. If you are struggling with inner conflict, if you have long established bad habits that are plaguing you, and you need to go to war against the devil, and you need a flag to carry you on, then you call on Jehovah Nissi. The Lord is our banner. If you are sick and shut in, and if you have been advised by the doctors that you have a critical illness, then call upon the Lord, Jehovah Rophe, the Lord, our healer. If you need to be fed, if you need to be protected, if you need to be led by the rivers of waters, then call on Jehovah Rohi. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Everything you need is in the Lord. The one who lives in God, the one who walks in the light as he is in the light, the one who has been baptized into Christ, such a one will defy all of the attacks of Satan, and he or she will be an overcomer. For the Bible said, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. I'm closing now, Lord, ladies and gentlemen. We know that life is not easy. We know that there are wars within and without. We know that victory is sure. In these closing remarks, let me say that everyone who receives Christ and is born again, all of your sins have been blotted out. The debt has been repaid. If Jesus paid the price, God will not exact that same price from you because the price has already been paid. You don't have to pay the price a second time. Jesus paid it the first time. And when you stumble and take a stunning blow from the devil, when you feel ashamed, lift up your head, and when people walk around and say, are oh, you supposed to be saved? Are oh, you supposed to be so Christian? Are oh, you supposed to be this? And look at you, look at you, look at you. Ah, ha, 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 ha. But I have the word of the Lord. As you point your finger of scorn at the children of God, I hear the Bible say, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that dies. Yea, rather, is risen again and is sitting on the right hand of God. We are worried about what folk are saying. Bishop, they're talking about us, and they're saying this, and they're saying that. And Bishop, they're talking about you, and they're saying that you are loose, and, and they're saying you are carnal. Let the demons howl and let them rage. <laughs> Who is it that can lay charge to God's elect? What? Shall we back up because some folk don't understand? Shall we back up because some folk criticize? Sometimes people need leading. They need guiding. And if a man who is in a leadership role is only looking to find out which way the wind is blowing and trying to find out which way the people are going, he is not a leader. He is a follower. A leader molds opinion. A leader makes opinion. A leader leads people. He doesn't follow. There are some men who always had their finger in the air. Which way is the wind blowing? What are the people saying? What are the people, the people, the people, the people? You are a leader. If you are a leader, then stand in front. Take the point. Anybody in the army here know what the point is? The point is the man who's out in front. He's the one who gets shot at first. He's the one who goes down first. 
He's one who has to make the ranch roll. The preacher is a leader. The preacher is a prophet. The preacher is a man of God. Be willing to go out in front. And I'm not worried because my faith is not in people. My faith is in God. Folk who put you up today will put you down tomorrow. I don't care how good you are at that. I don't care how many home runs you got. Yes, sir. But when we are at the last day of the penalty and you at that and as the bases are loaded, we are behind one to zero, that's two out, and you are at that, you could have been hitting 500 all the year. You could have driven in 195 runs all the year. You could have stored 200 bases all the year. But if you strike out, All those hits don't mean nothing now. We are now at the final hour. Old Joe Dokes is at bat. Casey struck out. Too bad. What I'm saying is that folks who put you up today will dump on you tomorrow. But God will never leave you. If you strike out, the Lord will never leave you. If you get caught, Trying to steal a base, the Lord will never leave. Jesus said, I'm with you always. Even to the end of the world. Satan is screaming and howling and trying to throw us out the track. And we're fighting with inward pressures and sin that's in our nature. And I hear the old songwriter, that old hymn. I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roll. I've felt sin's breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard, I said I heard the voice of my Savior telling me still to fight on. Why? Because he promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Is that someone here this morning? that would like to come forward. There's a brother right there. There's a young fella right there. Is that something? Come right on, young lady. Is that someone else? The name of the Lord is a strong power. God bless you right here. Come on. Come on. There's another one right there. Come on. Come on. There's a young lady coming down the aisle right there. Come on. There's another young lady coming up. Come on down. God bless you, young lady. Where are you, my friend? God bless you there, my brother. Come on down. They should not perish. They should God bless you over there, my brother. The righteous run into it and the faith. When you come, come on, son. God bless you, son. Trust the Lord. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You may be in the balcony. 
You may be in the overflow. You may be in the dining hall. But wherever you are, you may be here in the sanctuary. We're waiting for you. And I want you, we're not ready to close off yet. Sometimes the enemy will say, well, wait a few moments longer. You get ready to close. No, I'm not closing yet. I'm not closing yet. Because I feel that somebody is struggling. And I think it would be an injustice to open up the church and then close it down real quick. No, we're going to wait. God bless you, young lady. I'm not going to close yet. Somebody's wrestling, trying to make up their mind. This is a big decision. I want you to come, and the Lord wants you to come. He brought you here, and he's talking to you now. And if I can go by experience, in fact, my own personal experience, I know that there are some of you now who want to come, who are wrestling with this, and really don't know why you're not coming. But if you'll trust the Lord and believe in him, you will find your life will take on new meaning. Your life will be changed in such a way that you never imagined. The joy and the peace that comes along with serving Jesus is greater than you could ever think. I think that Peter said it was joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. Come on. There is someone else, I'm sure. You may be here in the front, you may be in the middle, you may be in the back. We don't want to close without you. God bless you there, young lady. We don't want to close. It takes a little time. It takes a little time. Somebody's trying to break away. And I want you to do it. And the Lord wants you to do it. And you can do it. And you ought to do it today. God bless you there, young lady. God bless you there, young lady. You ought to do it now, today. God bless you, my brother. And God bless you over there, my brother. Yes, sir. It just takes some time. This is a big decision. You're the Lord is working with you. Streets that are paved with gold, but he knew the price of one lost soul. Was more than wealth could buy. And if we did, John, is there was someone else? We're closing now, but we don't want to close without you. Isn't there someone else? who loves the Lord and yearning to be free. Mr. Simmons to come. Let us pray without doubting. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you in prayer and in thanksgiving. For we know you and have come to know you to be the great I am. We come, O oh God, with joyful hearts and thanksgiving. 
asking you, O oh God, to meet our needs. For yes. we know, O oh God, that with you dwelling in us, we can do all things. O oh God, with you protecting us, there is no weapon to farm against us. That shall prosper. We stand firm on the foundation, O oh God, that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that the gates of hell will not prevail against him. Therefore, O oh God, we claim the victory that you've given us. We come, O oh God, praying for these who Thank have you, special prayer requests upon their heart. Those, O oh God, who have family and friends who are not in the best conditions due to lack of, O oh God, opportunity, have not been blessed the way, O oh God, they would feel and we would like them to be. We ask your God to meet these needs. We ask your God to dry those teary eyes. O oh God, yes. those discouraged hearts, O oh God, we ask you to uplift. Oh God, we have to help us to give your name praise and honor at all times. When we have abounded, oh God, and when we've been abased. When we, oh God, have been rich, when we have been poor. When, oh God, things have gone our way and when they haven't. Your name be praised in all and through all and at all times, oh God. For you have never left us. You will never forsake us. You will give us a victory at all times. And, oh God, we thank you for these souls that have come down to be baptized in your name. Oh God, we thank you for rich reached their heart and moved and shown them a need and a desire to be saved. You've broken down that middle wall, that petition, O oh God, that has been between them and salvation. They will leave this place, O oh God, blessed forever. Keep us in the heart of your great hand, protect us as we leave this place. O oh God, and forever we'll give your name and praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you to please hold your seats. Be seated as we baptize these candidates in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in thanksgiving for these who have surrendered for baptism in the name of thy Son, Jesus. Grant them full repentance and fill them with the Holy Spirit and reserve for them a place in your kingdom. And we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for his sake, amen. My dearly beloved sister, we now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ yes. for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift. 